Welcome to the Weekly Lead Podcast, Week 20. I'm pastor and podcaster, Becky Tirabasi, and I hope you're watching me at least some of the time on YouTube because I always have a show and tell. And over the next few weeks, I really thought you would appreciate the fact that I have a silver cuff given by a friend to me when I spoke on June 9th, 1994 to Billy Graham Crusade. And that has inspired me to pull out a few of my favorite, favorite quotes by Billy Graham, evangelist um, of the 20th century, who reached millions of people for the Lord Jesus Christ, whom I met when I spoke at the Greater Cleveland Billy Graham Crusade in 1994. He gave me a Bible signed by Billy Graham. I saw him receive the Medal of Honor in the United States House of Representatives. He is a hero of mine. And here is what he says that has been so influential in my life. The Bible teaches that man's chief problem is spiritual. I believe it. I totally believe it. If you were to stop and think about the problems in the world today, in this century, in this decade, in this year. And if you were to look at the problems in our nation, in your state, in your city, even in your own family, I believe that what the Bible teaches and how Billy Graham shaped it is that man's chief problem is not political, it is not financial. It is not relational. It is spiritual. The weekly lead, I began it in January of 2022 as a call to find 100 weekly leaders who would help me identify 100,000 Bible readers who will make a commitment to pray daily on their own and weekly with a group of 10. It's all very manageable. For me to find 100,000 Bible readers, because if I believe it's true that man's chief problem is spiritual and that the Bible will address it and teach from it and teach those people whose problems are spiritual, then we have to get people to read the Bible not once in a while, not haphazardly, but daily, and to read the entire Bible that we would hear God's voice. So the weekly lead has been based on the four tenets of a leader, L-E-A-D, loyalty to God's word. This is another wonderful quote by Billy Graham. He said, the very practice of reading the Bible, which is why for over 20 years, I've encouraged people to read the Bible daily by reading the Change Your Life Daily Bible. And if you're watching me on YouTube, and I hope you will, the Change Your Life Daily Bible is a 365-day Bible. And in 365 days, in just 15 minutes a day, you will read Old Testament, New Testament, and a Psalm and Proverb every day, no matter if you're in high school or if you're a pastor. If you've never read through the entire Bible, then you will be so encouraged, especially by Billy Graham's quote. The very practice of reading the Bible will have a purifying effect on your heart and mind. Let nothing take the place of this daily exercise. L is for loyalty to God's word, the foundation of leadership. E is encouragement to others. Now, A.W. Tozer said, revival, I love the word, which is a new obedience to God, is a new refreshing rush of power from God. That's what encouragement is meant to do. It's to give you hope from God. Do you walk into a room and bring a refreshing rush of power from God with you? Loyalty to God's word, encouraging to others. A is for advocate, for the young generation. You know, um, I would like to just show you, if you're watching on YouTube, what my link tree looks like. It's something that allows you to have free access to a 20-page download of how to restore an aching soul. 
It is a research paper I did on um, how we can diffuse suicidal tendencies and substance abuse in the young generation. This was my seminary summative paper, my final paper. I didn't do it on the Bible. I didn't do it on prayer. I did it on the young generation because for 45 years or more, I have been speaking to students, going to lunch with students, speaking to 20,000 students, whatever God will let me do, to diffuse their aching souls. It's part of being a young person. And the culture we live in is at such a place where unless you and I are advocating for the young generation, social media, uh, and beyond will take them away from God and into a dark, dark place. So this uh, link tree on my Instagram uh, link in bio, you can download a free 20-page paper on restoring an aching soul. It gives you tools for helping the young people in your life, whether you work with them, you parent them, you teach them, your siblings or peers alongside of them. Just join the weekly lead team and you get the 20 page download. There's a, um, a 21 day kickoff, a burning heart, 21 day kickoff. What is that? It's a place where you can take a 21 day adventure free or with a student alongside of your own child and talk about prayer and purity and purpose. You and I must be the advocates for the young generation. And finally, devoted to prayer. L-E-A-D, leaders in the 21st century must be loyal to God's word, encouraging to others, advocates for the young generation, and devoted to prayer. And of course, I'm going to quote Billy Graham one more time. Prayer is more than a plea. It's a place. It's a place where we must spend time if we're going to learn about its power. You know, it's not coincidental. I wrote a book called let prayer change your life over 20 years ago. Why did I write a book about the power of prayer? I was just a young youth worker at the time. I hadn't gone to seminary yet because prayer is powerful. It changes things. It changes people. It changes you like nothing else. Worry won't do it. Money won't do it. Education won't do it. Prayer will change your life. And Billy Graham calls it a place, unless you make time for God, in a place where you quietly talk to him and listen to him, what? You'll get distracted. It's not, it's not rocket science. If you're in a place where everybody's talking, you're not going to be able to listen to God and talk to God clearly. So every day, every week, every day I read the Daily Bible, every week I, on the Weekly Lead podcast, give you a preview of what you're going to be reading this week. At my church, viewpointchurch.org, my husband, co-pastor, Dr. Roger Tirabasi, and I preach through the Bible. This is our third year. We tell you on Sunday what you're going to be reading this week. Two years ago, we did Old Testament. Last year, we did New Testament. This year, we're doing New or Old or Psalm or Proverb. Here's what you're going to be reading this week. Why? Because we want to entice you, encourage you, get into the Word of God. He has something to say to you every single day of the week. Billy Graham said the very practice of reading the Bible will have a purifying effect on your mind and heart. I shared this when we uh, opened this podcast. Let nothing take the place of this daily exercise. It's an exercise. It's a daily routine. It's something I'm calling you to. If no one else in your life is calling you to read the Bible daily, then I am. Please join me that you might be a leader for God in the 21st century. This week, you'll read Old Testament. And why did I say that quote about purifying your mind? Because you're going to read 1 Samuel 15 to 16, the story of Jonathan and David, who are spiritual friends. You're going to read in the New Testament, John chapters 8 through 11, about the good shepherd who makes sacrifices, and they know the shepherd's voice. 
those sheep who follow him. You know, I had a conversation with a girl recently. She said to me, I know what God wants me to do. The next day, she basically said to me, I'm not going to do it. Okay. Psalm 109 says, I will give myself to prayer. In the first great awakening, George Whitfield said, fall upon your knees and grow there. If you don't pray, what are you missing? The Psalms are written prayers. As you read them every day, you learn how to pray. And then there's Proverbs 22. Plans go wrong for lack of advice, it says. I jokingly say to people, I married a counselor. It saved me a lot of money. It's not a joke. I always seek counsel of those in authority over me as it comes alongside the word of God in my prayer time with my board members. Will you seek the Lord with me so that God might speak to us about the next steps? I, I pray that you would take the challenge to read the Bible daily. Don't put it aside. Don't make decisions without hearing God's voice. L is loyalty to God's word. E is encouragement to others. It's giving people hope. So what did Billy Graham say? I don't think people can live without hope. What oxygen is to the lungs, hope is to this, our survival in the world. And then he adds, the Bible is filled with hope. Do you know why I give students who people have told me, oh, don't ask a student to read through the Bible in a year. Do you know why I give them the Bible to read every day? And a number of students, and believe it or not, it's been boys who have read through the Bible each year in high school. Why do I give them the Bible? Why do I give students the Bible? I don't know a demographic that is more filled with anxiety and more distracted than the young generation. Why do I give them the Bible? To give them hope. I'm sure of it. The Word of God will give them hope. Which leads me directly to A, advocates for the young generation. A young man just came up to me this week. He said, you know, I used to go to this church, and after church, everybody would go out drinking, and then some people would do more than that with each other. He said, it took me one week going to your church, and I heard a message on holiness. And he said, I want that. Billy Graham said, far too many young people have no spiritual or emotional roots. They have been deprived of values by an agnostic and contemporary culture. If you don't know that, I'm here to tell you. So if you're a parent, don't be afraid to speak truth from the Bible. If someone says you're being judgmental, then suggest, no, I'm being biblical. Professors, you must care for your students. Whatever you're teaching, you must also care about how they look on a given day, why they aren't in your class, why they look downtrodden. You must care for your students as much as teach them what you've been assigned to teach them. Pastors, you must never give up on youth ministry. I always take students to lunch once or twice a month. I treat them, and then we go to yogurt. Why? I want to hear their heart. I want to know what they're thinking. I recently told them, okay, if I cannot get you to read the Bible daily before you leave for, leave for college, I am going to have to come to your college. And they're like, okay. I'm like, wait a minute. No, no, that went backward. I'm trying to get you to read the, the Bible, not go visit you in college. I want you to hear God's voice every day. I want you to have this habit before you get to college, because college could really take you off the path of God. And peers, maybe you're a collegiate leader, Maybe you're a high school leader. Maybe you have a group of friends who follow what you do. I just want to tell you, your holiness, your invitations, your habits, your invitations to go to church, your spiritual disciplines absolutely influence them. I was with a good friend this week. He's my age. And he said in college, he had no Christian background, but he had roommates who loved to do the right thing, who loved to go to chapel, who loved to sing uh, spiritual songs, who did um, spend time in prayer together. He said, so I followed. 
I had no idea that that is what a Christian would do. So I want to encourage you, collegiate leaders, be a leader. Be an advocate for the young generation, even though you are the same age. And finally, devoted to prayer. Every single week, I encourage you to take the Burning Heart 21-Day Adventure. It's a call to 21 days in one-hour-a-day prayer, a call to purity, and a call to purpose. And one of the people I often quote when it comes to purity or purpose or prayer is A.W. Tozer. And he talks about prayer as giving you a personal revival. And he said there's four things to be set in order before you can have a powerful, powerful revived prayer life. Set your face like a flint to purity. Second, set your heart on Jesus. No distractions. And he suggests that if you watch Pilgrim's Progress, a very old um, story about how one man was so distracted, you will see how many times the pilgrim got in trouble by straying away from God. Set your face like a flint, your heart on Jesus. Set yourself up for examination. Have no secrets in your life. Be accountable to the people around you. Tell them the secret you're trying to get rid of so that they ask you rather than hide it and try to do it on your own. And fourth, make holy commitments. Again, I invite you to take the Burning Heart 21-Day Adventure. It's free at burningheartsinc.com. It is a call to prayer, purity, and purpose because I believe the foundation of leadership for men and women and students in our country must be loyalty to God's word, encouragement to others, advocacy for the young generation, and devotion to prayer. Will you join me? Go to Instagram, Becky Tirabasi, link in bio, join the lead team, get that download, take the Burning Heart Adventure, become one of the weekly leaders in my sphere of influence who will lead your own prayer meeting weekly and call people to daily Bible reading. Amen? Amen.